Armar HD. Trijigon came out with some strange, like very weird options for red dots. And we're gonna talk about the Armar HD. But I wanna show you something really cool. See this right here? Do you see this? One of one that I'm still working on. But guess what it's for? Boom, five inch steel frame PDP. That's right, boys. Five inch duty holster with the HD on it. Today at the range, I ran everything through the one of one mod. Uh, there's a few things I wanna tweak on this still. I'm still doing some testing, but I really wanna get you guys squared with a five inch option. And you'll notice all the goodness in the bottom, all the guts are still in place. So if you didn't know, it was a modified holster. You probably wouldn't know unless I told you. So, but without further ado, let's go to range and shoot the Walther PDP steel frame with the new RMR HD. Before I get too far on the HD, let me tell you a little about what we do here at RDR. We're a soft gear manufacturer. We specialize in plate carriers, placards, a full line of professional grade canine gear, EDC belts, two-piece belts, and of course, our Safarian holster mods like you saw, holster accessories, tourniquet hangers, straight drop plates, UBLs, etc. all which you can find on our website at rdrgear.com. So, full disclosure, Trigicon, with Trigicon, there is no Trigicon. They don't know me. I wish they did, but they don't. Um, so I did buy this HD, full retail, um, and there's some uniqueness to them. Um, and if you guys did not know, the Armor HD is very similar to the SRO in shape, size, etc. Top load battery, square face. So it's basically the SRO and the RMR had a baby and they called him Armar HD. And that's the difference between the two is that the front half of the HD is an Armar shape with a slightly taller window, square, the traditional two corner design of the Armar, which really makes these indestructible. This in my, what I often say on social is the SRO 2.0. Um, it is a square bodied SRO without the fragility of the rounded top, um, which I really do like. Uh, the, if you guys, I don't know if you guys can see this on the camera or not, but I'll put it up here. If you guys can see this little round circle right here, this is the light sensor. The HD's claim to fame is that it's an auto adjusting emitter. It senses the light at target, therefore it can adjust for those needs. Um, I'm gonna do some more testing. I'm gonna try to get, uh, Crispy has a really new, cool new head camera that does really good photography. So we'll probably do some more testing between uh, this guy and uh, this guy, the RCR, and we'll get you guys some more data. I'm still working with RCR. This just came the other day. I bought this one as well. Um, I wish Trijicon uh, loved us because this definitely, these two definitely hurt the wallet. So the RCR is unique in its own way, but I do like the HD a lot. Um, the, I did some notes from window heights. Um, so HD and RMR window heights, if you guys look at these both, um, window height is was it for 14 millimeters height on the RMR and 18 on the HD. It is a slightly taller window. So when you look at these two, 
there's some benefit of having that taller window to keep that dot in the window. Um, but again, that's not something you should rely on, that aspect of it, your grip, your presentation, your trigger press, et cetera, your target focused ability is what's gonna keep that dot in your window. With the RMR, I do, or HD, I do like the co-witness line here, um, or the witness mark, you wanna call it. There is the benefits of putting a white stripe. I don't know if Aaron coined the white line mark on the top of the RMR. Um, I do remember seeing it in his classes on his guns. Um, I had not seen it anywhere else, and that's just a white line down the middle of an RMR um, where he would just literally white out down the center, and it was a reference point when you had to present that pistol. You could look at the top of the dot of the sight, and you would have a reference point um, for that aspect. They have built one into the top of the HD. You could put a piece of white uh, white on there, white paint, whatever you want to do. Um, that is a reference point, as well as going back to the traditional shape of the ears. Um, this is the dot that should have come out. Why they went round, I, I understand why they went round. Round was the entry to USPSA competition shooting. This is, was to be the carry optics red dot. Trigicon was never a part of that space. This kind of just got hijacked into, we'll make it, since it's a red on a pistol, it's got to be duty rated, duty ready. It's not. The fragileness of the round um, really didn't lend well. Um, that is why they've gone back to the RMR body with the SRO length. Um, so again, the HD have a little bigger window. Um, it is a very good dot. I don't notice any of the hue tints that some guys talk about, but then again, it, sometimes when we read things, um, we sometimes kind of stick to them as gospel, and, and you really have to get time on something and make that decision for yourself. So we talked about window height. Um, the HD and the, and the SRO is the biggest window height of all the RMR products. Um, I, this is the dot that I least like. It's the dot that I use the least. Um, I just don't like how that thing floats all over the place. And I know some guys like it. Um, I have been shooting red dots for a very long time. Um, then I invest a ton of time and money into learning from professionals. Um, if you are hard target focused on a target, in my opinion, there's no need for a bigger window. The dot will be there if you're doing your part with looking at the target. So the the bigger the window, I feel, off the field, is this simply a crutch access for someone who's not putting the time in to be target focused. Is it fast for USPSA? Absolutely. If you're shooting competition, big window, yes. Anything else, duty, concealed carry, EDC, whatever, I do not believe the bigger window is going to give you a performance boost. Um, it's just, if you're doing your part, target focused, dot will be there. Features of the HD as well, top load battery, witness mark we mentioned. It is a multiple reticle red dot. It is the auto adjusting red dot, all of which you can change, turn off, adjust in your manual. One of the things that you guys will notice is the overhang. Um, that is something that, um, it's weird because in the manual, it states you should not put the red dot onto a pistol where it overhangs on the ejection port. On the Walther, it works out very well because it's far enough back where you have no issue, but put this onto, say, a Staccato XC, and you literally have the same problems that you do with an SRO. Um, the top load battery thing is cool. Um, in the past, I have not exactly enjoyed top load batteries because it's kind of weird to get a wrench in there to turn them. I have jacked up a couple of the gaskets on some SROs um, and in the Delta Point. I've not had it personally happen, but I had a buddy of mine where the door broke, the latch on the door broke and it was stuck up and therefore that's a, catast a catastrophic failure. The dot no longer works because the battery door is up in the way of the optic and therefore you're kind of done. So <sighs> This, the features of the HD, in my opinion, should have been on the RCR. The RCR should have gotten, because when you look at the rear of the, um, if I line these up correctly in the rear to rear, 
the front face of the RCR has plenty of room to have that sensor. Um, and with the top load battery, this is an easier access all the way around and the enclosed emitter. And it was odd that they came out with both these red dots, was it SHOT Show last year? Um, and this one has been all over to purchase. I should say all over, it, it, it's available and people have gotten it. And then the RCRs are just barely trickling in um, for consumer purchase. And I honestly think that was because of the LE push to, for Trigicon to maybe take over market space that they've lost in the LE space because with the auto adjusting sensor, that was their way to kind of say, hey, we're still here. Let me share some new product with you guys. And that was their push to really go into the LE space once again. As I mentioned before, I'm really digging the HD. I would buy another HD before I bought another RCR. I personally, with what I do, what I shoot, where I shoot, I do not need an enclosed emitter. Um, I know it'll be unpopular when I say this, so don't hate me in the comments, but this whole enclosed emitter chasing thing, um, it, it's social media driven. I have buddies right now deployed who are running red dots on Glocks and SIGs and they're all using RMRs, open emitter dots. And they are working in much more austere environments than I will ever, ever be in. And quite frankly, more austere environments than anybody will be in. So chasing the enclosed emitter market space is social media feeding us as fiends for that new cool thing, right? Um, I have not spent a ton of time on the RCR, but I already have noticed some things I really dislike and I'll share those as we go on. But the HD is very much growing on me. That RMR shape that my, I'm already used to and that more robust window, smaller height, the reticle adjustment I don't really use, um, the auto adjust I have it already set up. Um, I don't really need that per se. I often don't carry a weapon light on a pistol for my daily carry, I carry a handheld light. But when you look at this red dot, it has a lot of really good features for the LE community. Um, holsters is a downside, um, unfortunately, because it is so long, it does overhang, say, on the more popular LE pistol, the Staccato. I was not able to get this to fit into a Glock holster. I'm going to start revisiting some of the holster fitment again. Um, so that's something that we'll, I'll discuss as we go forward because in my opinion, there are times where so far the holsters are changed internally and then therefore they're all of a sudden they'll fit a particular red dot, they'll particular fit a particular length of pistol, whatever. And that wasn't addressed publicly. It just kind of shows up. So I'll share with you guys some uh, input on that as I go forward. But man, between the top load battery, which has been standard with the SRO, the co-witness mark I really like. I like the fact that HD went back to the true tried and proven RMR footprint styling. For those of you guys who like the multiple reticle option, great. Um, downside, $650 is a lot of money for Red Dot. Um, you know, and it, that compared to the holster thing, um, you, you pick you pick your poison, guys. Um, could you go and get at 650? Could you get two uh, Hollow Sun models? Could you get two EPS carries or EPS models? Could you get a couple of used RMRs? Yes, absolutely. Um, at for LE guys, I think it's 550 for an Acro. Yes, um, MPS. Yes. Uh, there's a lot of options out there that aren't at this price point. Granted some of the technology that's built into the HD is unique, but do your homework on holster fitment prior to purchase. That's gonna be a big one. Um, because I really think Trigicon, if they could go back, they probably would have flip-flopped the technology that's in the HD. They would have put that into the RCR. And if this had the front-facing reticle, or the front-facing, um, Aperture, 
I really think this would have taken the market by storm. There's a lot of features on this gun and this optic that are cool, some that are not cool, and but also it's a gun business. So don't think for a minute that NRA show or sometime next year there's an RCR with a front facing sensor built into the RCR. Don't think that for a minute won't happen because we all know how the gun business works. Look at Glock, right? So again, you guys, that is my kind of detailed first impressions of the RMR HD. Um, if you were gonna get one of the new Trigicon offerings today, I would say based on holster usage, I would really, you know, I would be RMR HD camp um, versus RCR camp. Again, I'm gonna give you guys probably I'm gonna shoot these for another, about another month, and then I'm gonna give you a head-to-head, -head, and I'm gonna share with you um, some first-person view with Crispy's new camera, and I'll let you guys see some of the things that I like on the HD, or excuse me, on, on the HD, and some things I'm really not happy with on the RCR. So again, you guys, that's what I got for you. If you like this content, and you like what we do here, like, share, subscribe, turn on the notification, on your YouTube channel that will show you the next time we upload a video. Until next time, be well, take care.